What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Jake here, aka Brush Strokes. Today, I thought I would go ahead and do a live video and do some pinstripe practice. So, not very good, haven't been doing it very long, but I thought maybe by doing this, it would encourage some of you out there to give it a shot or to just keep on trying. And actually, I am actually going to be using Tamco's Brush FX. This is a urethane pinstriping paint. I've tried some one shot, some alpha enamel, and I I uh, can't get used to them yet. I started with Tamco, and this is just what I've really liked. So this stuff covers really good, and this urethane paint actually dries super super fast too. So. So, no one's watching this, I doubt many people will come on live, but if you do, welcome and thank you. But if you're watching this on the replay, um, I will be doing these quite a bit more often. So, we're just going to start with some straight lines. First thing we want to do is get our brush palleted. So I'm just going to get some paint. I just got like some junk mail clippings you want to use. You know, something that's shiny, uh, non-absorbent non type of paper uh, to do your palleting. I get enough junk mail, I just cut these things up into little pieces. So, if you've never used urethane pinstriping paint, it is quite a bit thinner than like your one-shot or alpha, your enamel-based pinstriping paints. So, I found that... You, this stuff you really have to palette it quite a bit at first to get it um, more thickened out or dried up. And actually, before we start painting, I need to get my vent open here, get my little exhaust fan going so I don't stink myself out. So bear with me here a second. sure how well you can hear me I did do a little bit of live testing like on some private videos so, hey somebody's in here I can't read it though give me a second here get it pulled up here Cindy hey Cindy how's it going got my little friend right here with me he's watching Alright, so let's get back to getting the brush palleted. You want to sit here and work it in really good. You want all the hairs on your brush to be completely covered. I don't think you can over palette your brush. So. so how is Cindy doing this weekend? Alright, so when we start out... Um, this is what I learned at Tamco Takeover. I had a great instructor, Robert Messenger. He's an awesome pinstriper. Um, but what he says, put that tip down, take a big breath, and then go ahead and pull your line. Um, I got a little, my paint's still a little wet, so we're going to palette it out a little bit more and I'm trying something new too I cut some fingers off of a glove that way I get more of a smooth pull um, so yeah and this is about the best camera angle I can give you guys right now otherwise you get a huge glare on this glass um, by the way I am practicing on glass so the only thing I've pinstriped on so far. They say glass is a lot harder to do striping on, so I figured if I practice 
in the hardest possible way. And it'll be easy when I start pinstriping other stuff. And as you can see, I have some trulers taped down to my desk. Um, I can't really move the glass where I want it just because of where my camera is mounted right now. But the um, nice thing about this, I can start with these little dots. And I can start there and try to meet up with the, the bottom dot here too. Um, helps me keep straight lines. and it, It's just been very helpful during my practice. So little tip maybe some of you can use and help you out. Another thing with the brush, um, a lot of people, your tendency is going to be to hold it down here, but you want to hold it up on the handle uh, because when we do S curves and turns, um, you want to be able to twist that brush in your hand. So just get used to holding that brush up high, as high as you possibly can, up off of this ferrule area here. So. Cindy's good. Looks like Mr. Alien found an awesome home. He sure did. He's right here off a of camera. Actually, I bet if I close this. Oh, there he is. See him? He sits here and watches me all the time. Hey there, Hyra. How's it going? Just doing some pinstripe practice here. I'm not very good, but doing it to hopefully encourage some other people just starting out or trying this art. So maybe I should use a guide hand. That was a bad one there. I had a little shake in me. I don't know how good you guys can see that, but. a little bit more paint like I said this Tamco paint it dries super fast this urethane paint which is really awesome uh, you just got to make sure to keep palleting your brush and keeping it wet went to a car show today saw some pinstriping from Jim Hetzler I actually had taken a House of Color class with him. It was the first training I ever went to with him and John Kosmoski, the man, the House of Color creator himself. It was pretty cool to see some of Jim's work in person. Uh, really encouraged me to get on the brush and start doing some striping. So. Lay that brush down, take a deep breath. Yeah, Hyra, that sounds awesome. You should try it, man. It's really, really fun. But just to let you know, everybody really sucks in the beginning. So don't take that to heart. It takes a lot of time and practice. Um, I've probably been practicing uh, three, four months here and there. So I haven't had a lot of time to practice it, but I try to as much as possible. And as you can probably see, sometimes I try using my guide hand, like, a, you know, to steady it. Um, I'm trying not to do that, um, just because one day I'm going to be pinstriping cars or motorcycles, and I may not be able to, you know, I might be in some tight areas or something where I can't use that hand. And I like making things as hard as possible on myself. Is you make things hard, you know, then everything else just kind of becomes easy. And just in case anyone's wondering, I am using a Mac Hansen 
double zero, king 13. I don't know if it'll focus. This is a king 13 brush. Um, I've tried a few different ones. I really do like these ones. So I do have a little bit of reducer here when my paint gets dry. Just dab it, get it palletted up. Now, they say the, one of the most important things is getting that feel for the paint, the drag in the paint. And I could not feel what everybody talks about. It took me probably two months of practicing quite a bit till I got that feel. But once you get it, you will, you'll feel it. Like, it just takes time, so don't get discouraged at all. Set it down, take a deep breath. I'm going to try it with a guide hand here. A little wobbly, but not too bad. And, oh, like I was saying too, I saw some of Jim Hetzler's work. He's world renowned pinstriper. And no offense to Jim at all, but. I don't think it'll be too long before I'm close to being able to pull good clean lines like him. As far as designs and stuff, I got years to go there, but I feel like I have came a long ways pinstriping already. So I've been doing some skinny lines. I like doing skinny signs skinny ones. Hey Felix, how's it going? Oh, no problem, Hyra. That's awesome. So, maybe I'll try to do some more early morning pinstriping so you can catch some more. So, cuz that's when I usually pinstripe first thing in the morning when I get up. So, let's try a fatty line here. So, now we'll just want to put more pressure down on the brush. Looks like I started lightening up right about here on the brush. I don't know how good you can see it, but it starts to get a little skinnier down here and a little bit skinnier on the end. But anyway, I've practiced enough straight lines. I need to work on my on my curved lines. So like I was saying earlier, make sure when you hold that brush, you're holding it up on this rounded part because we're going to want to turn it in our hand and when you're making curves you want you want to start turning the brush way before like way ahead of your tur actual turning too so so we'll just do a c curve here and i'll kind of show you what i mean i'm going to start my brush um, at a little bit of an angle because we're going to we're going to make a c this way so i'm going to start it at a little bit of an angle and just watch how I twist that brush in my hand as we make that curve. So we're down, and I'm going to start turning the brush already. Now my brush is almost straight, and now it's curving the other way already. So just think of it, um, my instructor Robert Messenger, he had mentioned, just think of it like a rudder on a boat. like. You want to get, you want to turn it first, and then, you know, the brush will follow the curve. So let's go ahead and do another C. We'll just start right off of this one. Work on connecting, connecting our points here. Continue down. The brush feels, the paint feels good and loaded up. There we go. So, how is Felix doing today? Alright, and I'm a righty if you can't already tell, but 
when you're doing pinstripe designs, um, to me, the curves this way are easier. Curves this way are harder. So we'll see how this goes going this way. And I'll just go down and do the same thing I did here. Um, go another way. And that gives us a good practice of how to meet up our own lines. And I'm going to try to do some symmetry here. Not very good at it, but we will give it a shot. Deep breath. Start turning that brush. Not bad, not bad. Powder paint. Or brush. We'll do the same thing here. Set our tip down, take a good deep breath. Get a little more paint, palette it up. Nice thing about urethanes too, uh, depending on the temperature and everything, um, so you don't even really need reducer most of the time. Paint's almost good to go right out of the can, especially this tan coat. It's really, I really love the way it flows. So. All right, I don't know how good you can see that, but down here at this little end here, um, I did not have my brush turned enough. And it started to blow out, which mean, means it just kind of widened up the stroke. So. Oh, holy cow, seven people in here? I didn't think there would be more than one or two. So welcome everybody. Say hi if you can. It's nice to have everybody here. If there's something specific you want to see or have questions, feel free to drop a comment. continue on with some more C's here we'll do we'll do the same little practice I did here actually this time I'm gonna go back and forth um, I don't know just to mix it up make it a little bit different And I do want to mention these fingertips off this glove. I am loving them. This is the first time using them. Sometimes I get sweaty hands or, you know, being on this glass, you know, it can get, it's 80 degrees here in my studio right now and 40 degrees humidity. So, you know, temperatures change, surface tension changes. You know, um, I use this glass all the time for my practicing. So. Sometimes there's a little residue left over. Sometimes I clean it off with lacquer thinner or Tamco reducer. Sometimes there's you know a little bit of paint on here and it gets a little stickier in spots. So, but I'm really loving this. I feel it feels a lot more comfortable pulling the line um, when I'm the drag on my finger is just super smooth and consistent right now. So I'm really loving it. So. Felix says he's trying to learn lettering also have fun even if you're not really yeah exactly it is so fun even when you're not good I'm not very good either as you can see so but I really have a lot of fun with it so but just keep after it and you will get good so and uh I actually was gonna order some lettering brushes today because I want to try some lettering too so if you have some lettering brushes Felix that you have and you like please let me know which ones you like. Maybe I'll give them a shot and get some ordered. Be 
thought I had blue paint on my fingers. <laughs> Funny. Nope, I actually, this was like a, a vinyl glove for putting on vinyl. Here, I'll grab them. And I bought a pair of these Vivid gloves or for putting wrap, like vinyl on. I use these a lot um, when I'm painting, um, when I lay vinyl. Um, these are awesome for when you do silver and gold leafing. Um, I use this to knock some leaf off. So I really only I have a couple pairs of them, and figure I'd just cut the fingers off of one of them, slapped them on these two fingers. These are the fingers I put down on glass. Sometimes just a pinky, but sometimes I use my uh, ring finger as well too. So. Yeah, I really love how this tan paint flows. Like I said, I've tried One Shot and Alpha Enamel and I don't know. I just, this is what I started with. This is what I really like. So everyone's going to have their own preference. The nice thing about this urethane paint too, like in an hour, not even an hour, in like a half hour or so, I can clear right over this. Um, I don't have to worry about any issues, you know, with it. I know with the enamels you gotta wait a long time for them to dry and then also um, they say when you clear coat over enamels you have to really dust on the first coat of clear I'd rather just clear the way I always do you know and not have to change it up so this is really good fast drying paint that you can clear right over the top of not very long after laying stripes down and as far as its durability, um, at the Tamco Takeover training that I went to, uh, we did it back in November and then again in May. Um, in November, uh, a bunch of the instructors striped up the food truck um, that was there. And it all, all that paint in May, six months later, it was all held up perfectly. So again, that, they're in Virginia, so unlike here in Iowa, they don't have nasty winters, so, but who knows, maybe I'll put some stripes on one of my cars here soon and test the durability of it. And another thing, you can always add hardener to this as well um, to give it extra durability. Um, Camco's Clear Coat Hardener, the 7600 series hardener, works great with this stuff too. I've tried it that way. Um, it does flow um, almost better actually so uh, let's try some S curves now we'll go ahead and start with some big ones so I'm turning that brush already now I'm all the way turned now I'm going to start turning back already now I'm, the brush is already turned back. Yeah, that's one of the most important things. If you don't turn your brush, here I'll show you what happens. Let's go somewhere where you can see good. So, if we don't turn our brush, it's going to be hard for me not to. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard for me not to. Uh, you know what? I don't think I can do it anymore. I don't know how to blow my lines out. There we go. Yeah, if you don't turn your brush, that's what happens. The hairs start trailing off, and you'll start to get like this little blowout, this little fatty line. You know, you can get some little streaking in there, so. But yeah, you always want to turn that brush. You can just roll it in your fingers. If that's too hard, you can, you know, r just turn your whole hand too like this. You know, but you, that brush has to be turning ahead of the, the curve you're trying to make. Oh, we're 
we'll just go right alongside this S. Try to make copy it. And a little bit off in here and in here. And that's okay, I'm not sweating it. I'm just starting out. So. We'll continue on with some more of these S curves. Yeah, the biggest thing do not get discouraged at all. It is the hardest thing that I've ever tried. Like Airbrush was a piece of cake learning that compared to this. This is by far one of the most challenging forms of art I've ever tried. So just don't get discouraged. Just keep trying, trying, trying. Practice is the only way you'll get better. Alright, the line was pretty consistent, except for I got thin at the bottom like I always do. But with pinstriping, that's part of a cool design too as it kind of narrows down. So, Felix says, have you seen the video with Big Daddy Roth interviewing Von Dutch? It's really great. I actually just saw it the other day and I started watching it and then I fell asleep. So. Uh, I will have to definitely check it out. But if you guys are out there learning, wanting to learn how to pin straight, there are a few good, really good channels out there that I can recommend. Um, first one is Via Pinstriping. That's spelled V-I-L-L-A Pinstriping. Uh, he's really good. Um, he has tons of videos out there, and we are actually talking about doing a collab panel too, where I paint up a panel, send it to him, he pinstripes it, and we do some sort of giveaway. Um, and then another great channel is a Low Sitting Pinstriping, that's L-O-W-S-I-T-T-I-N. He's an older gentleman, Bob, he's really, really good. I actually won one of his art giveaways, and I got an original piece of pinstriping work from him. And I will actually pull that off the wall and show you guys. So, uh, this is from Low Sitting Pinstriping. He does, he's been doing giveaways, I think, like every 100 subscribers. So if you don't subscribe to his channel, head over there, hit subscribe to his channel, tell him Brushstroke sent you. But yeah, he does some amazing scroll work and all sorts of things. He's a really good guy too. If you have any questions or anything, drop them in, in the comments and he will answer your questions for you. Might even make a video for you too. And I will do the same as well. So if you guys you know, have any questions about anything, let me know. You know, if I get a chance, I'll even make a video. Um, you know, I'm not, I haven't been painting very long, but I've been totally obsessed with it. And that's basically all I do with my life for the last almost four years now I've been painting. So I started out just with airbrushing. I was just basically doing t-shirts and textiles for almost the first two years um, before I even tried airbrushing on any hard surfaces. And then just so happened to be a House of Color training class that was an hour and ten minutes away from my house and I had just enough money in my bank account to pay for the class. I, Paid for the class, filled up my car with gas, and I had like $110 left to my name. Went to a house of color class, and it, it just really sparked me to get out there and learn how to paint with the spray gun. So 
Right after that, I started spraying with a spray gun, and that was in September 2017. Not sure how good you can see it. There's a little bit of a blowout here. It's hard for me to get my camera where I'm not going to get this big old glare from my overhead light. So let's see if we can get you in a little closer. Now, when I do this, my camera's in my way a little bit too, but that's all right. Which means it's going to be harder to pinstripe, which eventually will make it easier in the long run. So let's start trying them the other way, the hard way for me. Felix, you'll check them out. Yeah, sweet. You bet. Yeah, check them out. They got tons of great videos, tons of great information. A couple, they're the, I think the only two pinstripers I really follow. Well, I follow some others that actually do everything. Pinstripe, custom paint. Those are my two favorites. I don't know how good you can see that. It's pretty bad through here go thick and thin that's right like I said this is my bad side so we got work on that and with urethane paints you want to use whatever reducer that company has to you don't you don't want to use mineral spirits I accidentally grabbed a bottle of it the other day and was reducing my urethane with mineral spirits and I was wondering what the heck was going on with my paint because it just wasn't working right. Let's try my guide hand here. Maybe that'll help with this side. Ooh, that was bad. Oh well. Oh, my brush is getting pretty dry. We'll get this wet and loaded back up really good always keep your brushes wet and always keep them stroking oh you haven't figured out scrollers those are my absolute favorite actually let's do that right now then let's clean this baby out give me a minute I actually love scrolling. It's really fun. And I'll give you the few little tips that really help me like go from not being able to scroll at all to being able to do some scroll work. That that was all scroll brush right there. That was my morning practice. Give me a second to get this brush cleaned up good. give you something to watch here sorry I'm not used to this live stuff yet too much so bear with me it's the first time I've did it in a really long time and I'm actually doing it off my computer now I, I used to just do it off my phone so figured I bought this really expensive Alienware computer I better put it to good use now I can do some live streaming 
bear with me. I'm going to have to flip my glass around here and clean it up a little. This is a four foot by one foot piece of glass I got. Next door neighbor was throwing it out, so I said, no, you're not. I need that. It's up perfect. And it's like a, over a, like a half inch thick too, so it's big and heavy if you can't hear that. favorite scrolling brushes are Vondagos Pro Series of Lightsabers. I can focus. It's not going to focus for you, but these are my favorite brushes. And I like the short handles. Um, they do make they do make some long handled ones too. Um, so you can get the lightsaber in the LH. It's a long handle. Personally, I, I like the short ones, it's, and that's all just personal preference as well. So. All right. See that? Already dry. No paint. Now I'm gonna get a new palleting here. Uh, one thing with the urethane paint, if you keep palleting in the same spot, it does kind of dry out, get a little gummy. And just get yourself a new little palleting station there. Let me move some stuff around here so I can slide this glass down. And the camera's not right in my face in my way. Actually, I'm going to move it a little on you. Oh, came undone. Bear with me here. spot where that glare's not so bad. Anywhere I move this thing, you're going to get that light glare. So. Alright, so first thing about scrolling, you want your brush to be wet, wet, wet. Um, not like when you're using the dagger or sword brushes. You almost want your paint dripping off the brush, almost. But just like with all pinstriping, you want to palette it really good so all that paint gets in all the hairs, all the way through, all the way around. Let's see how good you can see it here. So you can almost see it's almost dripping off. It might be hard to tell on camera. There you go. Now you can see that drip. There it is. But yeah, that's how you want it for scrolling. You want the paint really, really thin. Um, and you want to be, you only want to use the tip of the brush. So you want to hold it, you know, almost straight up and down. Um, what I like to do, I rest my palm down and then I set the brush down. You want to lead the brush. Now one of the most important things is staying on the tip of the brush here. Let's see if we can get you a lot better view. Bear with me here. Got one of these stupid little flexi arm mounts. I guess that would probably be a better view for all the pinstriping. That way you can see the angle of the brush and everything. So, so alright, we're getting our brush wet, keeping it nice and wet. 
to where it's almost dripping off the brush. So when we set it down, we only want to use the tip of the brush like this, and we want to lead the brush to When you push down on the brush, it'll make you know those fatter little lines like that. Um, one thing I did learn about scrolling too: you don't want to like use your arms. Like if you look up in my little camera up in the corner, you you don't want to do this. Like the most fun part about scrolling, um, my instructor at the takeover told me this. He's like, use your whole body. So watch me up in the corner here, but I, I use my whole body. My arms stay pretty stiff, my elbows stay close in, so let's go ahead and do some infinity circles here where you can see better, we'll do it right here. And then if, when you're scrolling too, when it starts to get light on paint, if you push down on the brush like that, it'll reload your brush for you too. That was a pretty bad example blow out there. That's what happens when you try to watch the camera at the same time. But, so you always want to, when you're scrolling, set it down just on the tip, and then the brush will lead like that. So. When you push down, pull up, you can make those fancy little tails. Not doing very good with my scrolling right now. Apologize, I'm trying to watch the camera at the same time. Yes, when you push down on the brush, it will actually reload some paint to the tip. Um, and this is a this is a size one lightsaber as well, so it's a fairly small one, so it does not hold a lot of paint. Blow out. My paint's getting dry. I need to load this baby back up. Should probably get my reducer over here for this. Like I said, you want your paint runny when you scroll it. And FYI, I barely practice in front of anyone. Like if my mom, brother, daughter, dad are over here. I really don't like people watching me just because I get nervous so but if I plan on pinstriping at car shows or doing this at all in the future I'm gonna have to get used to it so you guys are getting an exclusive look and I guess I did it at some at Tampo takeover as well that was my first real time doing it in front of other people And my paint is dry and I got some dunk in it. That's a little better. I always keep forgetting. Use my body. Use my body. So always want to pound that in your own head. Even I keep forgetting that. And it was probably the biggest thing that helped me too. Again loading that brush up you want to keep it super wet 
feel it says some good tips I'll try them out yeah yeah those were the biggest things that helped me I I sucked so bad at scrolling and then as soon as I got those few little tips it really really helped and changed the game I still suck but I'm getting better uh, better and better by each stroke that's all that matters and not necessarily every stroke some of them I still suck to sometimes they go backwards but everyone I learned something from out of our way and like I said make sure that brush is nice and loaded up move that body you know keep them arms and shoulders square every once in a while you want to push the brush down keep it the paint loaded towards the tip as you can see I'm staying right up on that tip well most of the time so I'm not blowing lines out actually I didn't notice I was blocking yeah, you couldn't see what I was doing there See that? See that drip? That's how we want it. Wet, wet, wet. See how I'm moving my body? Not necessarily moving my arms or my shoulders, keeping them tight. And I haven't really practiced much doing designs. I don't think. I don't need to do that right now. I, I want to get the brush control, control of the paint and the paletting down first before I try a lot of designs. Usually I'll just practice all sorts of random, different scrolling, different ways, you know, and maybe I'll come up with some sort of design in my own head one day off of these little practices. But a good practice is doing these infinity circles. brush getting dry so we'll get it loaded back up Let's see what here. infinity Move this again uh oh we're oh, stuck I stuck my paper right in one of those drips I had So this is a really good practice for scrolls, making these infinity signs. Jersey, what's up, buddy? It's not very good yet, but I'm getting there. Practice, practice, practice. Cindy, I still think I had you beat on being nervous at Tamco. Uh, yeah, maybe. I already knew everybody there. I'd already went there before, so I wasn't nervous, as, per se. It's just... I don't know. I like. I don't know. I just didn't want to pin. I didn't. I wasn't confident in my pinstriping. I wasn't very good, and I still am not. But as you can see, right there. I think me talking, taking my focus away. But like I said, make it hard on myself now. It'll be a lot easier in the future. 
The scrolling is by far the most fun. And as, and as you can see, I probably wasn't moving my body as much here. I was using my arms again. So again, move that body. Keep those arms nice and tight. Move your body, not your arms. So, so let me pump, pump, pump that in my head a little bit. Dance, dance with it. Have fun with it. Dance. So here we go. And one thing too, I think I just need to slow down. I don't like going fast, but... And as you can see here, my brush is drying up. I pressed down a little too late. Like I said, if you didn't catch it before, but pressing down on the brush, making those fatter lines, helps basically reload the brush and get more paint to the tip so if I do that sooner um, I'll be able to pull a longer line as well Maybe it's just me. At least I'm getting fairly decent at it. My favorite part of scrolling is these little fat flare outs. I'm getting pretty good at being able to, you know, taper them perfectly off the end. Um, I don't know, that's probably one of my favorite parts of scroll work is those those tips. Like that. Uh, I just love the. I just my favorite thing about pin striping is people that can pull off those beautiful tapers all the way down. Um, some pin stripers I see they just kind of go fatty ends. I like making them, you know, as fine point as I possibly can, and that taper, you know, being consistent all the way through the stroke. Glare. And I'm gonna have to figure out a better setup here, camera wise, and everything, so you're not getting the glare of my light here. So when we're doing these, we just put pressure down and then just gradually come up and get that nice taper. Now let's start making these shorter. Brush is getting dry. Let's load back up. Oh, one thing I didn't go over is how I hold the pin strip, how I hold my scroll brush. So, for me, unlike I, I still hold it up on the handle. I just hold it in between my two fingers. Like I said, I like these short brushes because, you know, I kind of have that handle goes up in the up inside my hand too. Now with the long handles, it feels like you know the brush is always resting right here, and I just I don't know. I just don't like the feel of it. So that's just a preference, you know. It's to each their own. I'm gonna practice some more of these little tails here and then I think I'm gonna get something to eat but I will be doing a lot more pinstripe practice on here I don't like how that one ended so you can always wipe your stuff off but like I said with this urethane it dries really fast though so you gotta be quick or use reducer Yeah. 
let's try some other way before we go again. I wish I would have saved maybe some of my first pin striping to show how horrible it was, but like I said, this is by far the hardest art form I've ever tried, so do not get discouraged, just keep trying. It takes a long time. It could take you a year or two to get it right, so, or even feel comfortable with a brush, so. Mm -hmm. Pull a few more here. Get down here where you can actually see a little better what the brush is actually doing. Move your body, your body, not your arms. There we go. A little better. Alright, so let's check out my crappy work. But hey, it's getting better and better. So, no pin striper yet, but I will be one of those. good for today that's all I had for you guys I will be doing pinstripe practicing quite a bit more so till the next one keep those brushes stroking